That was just a chair, I'm sorry. Okay, Austin Dekulis, he will go straight to questions. Do we have any questions right off the bat? To your left here, second row. What kind of player is Kentucky getting in Dare Rosenthal? <laughs> Dare Rosenthal is like my brother. And I can honestly say this with no hesitation. Dare's a dog, you know, big athletic freak, big, he's about six, seven, six, eight, dunk the ball, he can hoop, overall athlete, plays to the end of the whistle. So they're getting a very dependable, very dependable and very great player, so. To your right, second row. Hey, Austin Gillum, Fox How 8, you? New Orleans. How you doing? Hey, uh, I got a few questions. Um, how fun has it been this spring and working through football school mm -hmm. when there's an open competition at quarterback and you know that Max and Miles are giving it everything they got every single day because one practice or one right. workout could, could change that whole pendulum. Who's going to start against UCLA? How, how uh, good is this process for them? It's amazing, really. Oh, oh. Could you move closer to the mic? Talk to me. Oh, I apologize. This better? All right. Uh, it's, it's amazing, really, because you have both of those guys and they are like human highlight reels because they're fighting for everything. They're fighting for that spot. So they're going to give their best every day. And they're both, regardless of who it is, they're both going to do a great job for us. And I'm just willing, hey, at the end of the day, I'm going to block for both because I know both of them are going to get the job done. So. Hey, Austin, you were there on the national title team mm -hmm. last year. wasn't the year you wanted. Um, mm -hmm. What has been the message in the locker room? What have you all been talking about to get the nasty taste of 2020 out of your mouth? Just being able to, like, to play to the LSU standard of performance, you know, coming together as a team, just being able to be consistent where we weren't consistent, you know, just being able to just bounce back and show not that we're just going to play with, with – we don't play with a chip on our shoulder at LSU. We never have and we never will. We're always going to play to that LSU standard of performance. Front row to your right here. Austin, um, from your perspective, what's the quarterback battle uh, been like so far? It's been great. Like I, like I said earlier, you know, it's a competition. Competition brings out the best in everybody. And both of those guys are stepping up. Even uh, everybody from Garrett Nussmeyer, too. You know, he's been coming in, and he's one of those uh, Patrick Mahomes type guys. He likes throwing this, like, them special little passes. But all of them are doing a great job, really. So. Okay, well, so front row here to your left. Hey, Austin, Jared, Joseph, Fox 44 in Baton Rouge. Hope you're doing good. How you doing? I'm good, man, I'm good. Did you drive or did you fly? That's what. <laughs> man, look, drove, <laughs> drove. <laughs> All um, right. So talking to Coach earlier, he had said that mm -hmm. he brought in DJ Mangus and Jake Peets to run yeah. Joe Brady's office from 2019. Right. What have you seen so far? How much is, is what you're experiencing with those two coaches a resemblance of what Joe Brady brought in 2019? You know, when you compare both offenses from that 2019 season, to the one pieces bringing, you have both, both of those offense are just highlight real offenses. You know, you got, you got dangerous running backs, dangerous receivers, a da two dangerous quarterbacks, whoever's going to be. But the thing is about both of those offenses that are similar is giving playmakers plays to make plays in space. Say that about three times and I can't do it, I promise you. But the thing is, like, like I said before, it's just going to be a very energetic offense just like 2019 season. We'll stay here on the left, third, uh, second row. Hey, Austin, Jacques Doucet, WAFB TV. How you Rouge. doing? I'm good. Uh, local sports guys always drive. We don't fly anywhere yeah. for the most part. <laughs> so <laughs> it's got to be real far. I got you. I got you. <laughs> uh, the, the running game, it seems like mm -hmm. you guys were a little bit disappointed in what you got last year. What, 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 what are you going to need to do to improve this year as far as getting Tyree and Davis Price and John Emery going this year? I mean, that also falls on us, the offensive line. You know, we weren't. We didn't have the best season that we had in the past, you know. But uh, having everybody come back from all like aspects, from the offensive line to the running backs, this is going to build on the depth, build on the experience of the group, and you're going to see something different. So, to your right here on the second row. Hey, Austin, Matt Trent, WBRZ TV in Baton Rouge. How you um, doing? Coach O said a couple weeks ago on the radio that he already saw a leader emerging between Max and Miles. Mm -hmm. Just want to get your thoughts on who you thought that maybe would be and how that quarterback battle will play out heading into the fall. I believe both of them are leaders in their own aspect, you know, because not all leaders are the same. Uh, 2019 season, you had two different type of leaders. You had the lead by example type. You had uh, Lloyd Cushenberry, which is both. He was a, 
a lead by example guy 2019 season. Then you have Damian Lewis, which is more of the like the voice of the offensive line room. So you see both a difference in both of them, but they're both great leaders of the overall like team. So we'll go to the back row on your right. You're not even two years removed from you know winning a national championship, but do you feel like at times that LSU now gets overlooked, and why is that dangerous for you know other teams as a motivator for you guys? Say it one more time. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll lean closer to the mic this time. Yeah, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> You're not even two years removed from being national champions. Mm -hmm. um, do you feel like at times LSU gets overlooked, and why is that dangerous for everyone else as sort of a motivator for you guys? Uh, you know, any like program that goes from national championship to five and five, they're gonna always gonna like eh, they're gonna put them to the side a little bit, which is which is respectful, you know. The, if you don't produce and you don't do it good within your season, you're not going to get the love. You're not going to get the recognition. So it's really going to change after the season. So, you know. Third row, Ed Third Daniels. Row. Yeah. Thank you, Craig. Hey, Austin, Ed Daniels from New Orleans. Please don't take this question personally, but I, I have to ask, were you guys a little embarrassed by what happened last year based on the, the great year that mm -hmm. you had the year before to be a – a 500 team again. Did you right. take that personally? Did the offensive line take it personally? And was that one of the reasons why you guys decided as a group to come back? There's a lot of things. There's a lot of reasons why we chose to come back. And the thing going five and five, you know, it's no one's fault. It's uh, the players, we, us players, we play with our hearts. The coaches coach their hearts out. And at the end of the day, the chips didn't fall in our hands. So with the offensive line group, uh, we really like just came together and you look back, you look at 2018, you look at the season that the offensive line had, people were saying the similar things to us this past 2020 season. And I kind of like told those guys, like, look what happened whenever we all came back, 2019 season, Joe Moore Award, you know, all that. So I just sprinkled that little bit of insight on them and we just took that on the ground and run, so. Over here to your right, second row. Hey, um, one of the things I talked to Coach O about mm -hmm. is, um, I said, talking about 2019, you, were, you had some of the highest highs, then you go into last season, right. which not any of you guys, I think, were too, too proud of. So mm -hmm. he, I said, what did you learn from yeah. that? And he said, well, this year, I'm going to do it the way I want. So what changes have you seen in Coach O and the way he's handling things, but then also the changes that you guys are making yourselves as players? Changes with Coach O. Coach O's always been that, that great man that, since uh, the first day I met him. First day we had home visits and he came and visited my house. He had a bowl of chili in my living room with me. So, but no, nah, he, he hasn't changed since like one bit. He's gonna be that, you know, that stern coach everyone knows, you know, he's, but he's a player's coach, he cares about us. And it's just that respect there that we're, like from us to the coaches, from us to Coach O, and from Coach O to us, it's just that respect feeling to where we're going to do what's, do what's right at the end of the day. <laughs> Someone got some jams back there today. <laughs> but, uh, but no, yeah, it, we, we just have that relationship with each other that we're going to depend on each other and bounce back. So We'll stay here. Two more questions. Second row to your right. What's up, Austin? How uh, you doing? After winning seven in a row against a and when they joined the SEC, the Aggies have got two of the last three against you guys. Do you feel like they're kind of chipping away at your guys' status as, you know, if Alabama's one, you guys are two in the SEC West? Or are they climbing up towards that status of being kind of a real contender in that sense? I'm sorry. The, uh, the phone kind of threw me off. I'm sorry. What, what's the status of the LSU A&M rivalry? And, and do you see yeah. the Aggies kind of climbing <laughs> back up into that, that conversation that they could compete with you guys on a yearly basis? Uh, we're going to respect everybody. We respect A&M. You know, we respect all the SEC schools and all the other schools in their respective conferences. Uh, we don't really have a rivalry with anybody. You know, we play everybody the same. No matter the, who it is, too big or too small, we, don't, we treat them the same. Uh, personally, I... You know, you play, being a Texas guy, I always like playing in Texas, playing in my backyard, because I had a lot of uh, teachers in high school that graduated from a and so it was always fun to go play there. But as a team, everybody's the same. Last question, front row here. Uh, we talked about a lot of change that's going on. Of course, specifically for y'all on the offensive line, you have Brad Davis, and mm -hmm. what is he bringing to the table? What you know, newness has he brought to y'all that makes you feel you can perform at that Joe Moore Award winning level again? Right. Coach Davis is a very 
very stern coach. He's very, he's going to put that foot down. He's a Louisiana native. M many people might not know that, but he's going to be a great asset for us. You know, it's always tough seeing the coach leave, but at the end of the day, one door closes to another door opens, you know, just being able to see and like grow your game off of a whole different mindset of a coach can really be beneficial for a room. And I think that's going to be so. Okay, Austin, thank you very much. Thank y'all for having me. Y'all have a good one.